Hi, I'm Pam, and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically Show. My team and I help people step into their authentic realities via a number of different modalities. This show is obviously one of them. We also have a Facebook group, and we would love to have you join us. It's a group of like-minded people committed to spiritual growth and transformation, and we can be found at liveauthentically.today slash FB. And I'm super excited today. We have on the show Clarissa Thompson. Hi, Clarissa. Hi there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Today, Clarissa is going to be telling us about her yoga practice. And um, I'm super excited. I was super excited because I've never interviewed a yoga instructor on my show yet. So I decided to dress the part and I'm wearing one of my new jackets from one of my favorite yoga apparel stores. Do you like it? <laughs> I think it's super cute. Thank you. It's super comfy. I thought, you know what, I'm going to dress the part. So absolutely. Um, I can't wait to hear about everything that you do and how you help your clients and how you incorporate yoga into your lifestyle. But before we do that, what I would like to do is start the show off. I always start off every show with the same question. And that question is, what does it mean to you to live authentically every day? Um, I think really it just means uh, like waking up and embracing your day with whatever happens, right? So, um, you know, if you're going to live in an authentic way, it's about really understanding that you have control in every moment of your reaction to whatever is going on. And so sometimes like an authentic response is something that um, is a release, right? So you might have to release something um, and it might be, you know, something happens to you and you need to just let go of that stagnant energy. And so not holding that back and just really making sure that you are, um, that you're really living true to yourself. So for me, that's, you know, some days I wake up and I'm tired. And so I need to like do something to build a little bit of energy. Some days I wake up and I'm ready to go and I, you know, I move with that energy and that's really good too. Um, and then just acknowledging my humanness, you mm -hmm. know, like we're all human. We all go through struggles and looking for the tools and the people who help, um, help support me. And then as I help support others. That's great. And how do you, I'm curious, you know, how do you stay centered and grounded and focused on you? And you talked about, you know, you get to choose your reactions and we have control over our reactions. How do you navigate that when you're surrounded with stress or pressure or negativity from external sources? How do you stay focused on you and how do you manage your reactions so that they're not heavily influenced by what's going on around you? I'll take a couple breaths. Um, so I might just pause for a moment and like, it could be in the middle of a meeting, you know, like I could be at work and like someone could ask me a question and maybe I haven't really processed what's going on or I don't agree with something. And, and so I really just like have to take a moment and it might just be as simple as a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And that reconnects me to my center. It realigns my energy. It realigns my breath and it helps me remember that in the next moment, whatever it is I decide to do or say is uh, under my control, you know? So I choose the response. Right, right. I love that. I know a number of people have, um, have mentioned the importance of breath work or just the importance of even just pausing and taking a few moments mm -hmm. to frame your res you know, response rather than be so quick to react. So yeah. I think that's such a, such a great tool and something that we can all incorporate into our lives to help bring down stress levels and help us make more thoughtful, mindful um, responses to things. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about your journey to authenticity, because I know for most people, it's not a straight line. They, did, or they didn't just wake up one day and live an authentic life true to who they are, right? And I know for a number of people, there were layers for me, I know personally, there were layers that needed to be peeled back, fears that needed to be stripped away, doubt that needed to be eradicated, life experiences, super challenging ones that needed to be navigated, et cetera, in order for me to find or claim my authenticity. So tell me a little bit about what your journey has been to authenticity. Sure. Um, I think it aligns a lot with my yoga journey. Um, I have really felt, you know, I've been practicing yoga for just over 13 years and I started when I was in college and college is one of those moments in life when you're just trying to figure out who you are right it's like right. 
you get a little bit of freedom and, and then you really start to like figure out what your path is and it might change because mine has changed many, many times, Mm -hmm. but that's when my yoga journey started and I have continued to practice all along that winding path. And so for me, you know, a journey to authenticity, a journey to who I am as a person right now, you know, in this particular life, um, has really been guided by that experience. Um, and, and it continues to evolve. So I started, you know, I grew up as a very like self-conscious and, um, nervous and just someone who didn't really know anything about how to be strong, how to, um, to speak words that felt like they were my truth how to act in a way that made me feel confident and through the yoga practice. So not just, you know, the poses, but the breathing practices, the Mm -hmm. meditation practice, taking Mm -hmm. my practice off the mat and into my life that has really opened up confidence levels for me. It's given me balance both in mind, body and spirit. Um, And that has really helped me find that authentic voice. I remember my parents going to like pizza, teacher, um, parent teacher conferences. And my teachers would, you know, say, well, she's like, she does well in school, but she's so quiet. Like you can never hear her. And I never had many friends growing up. Um, always just a couple. And, you know, I've always only had just a couple of friends, like really, really close friends, Mm -hmm. but it used to really bother me, you know, that I wasn't surrounded by like big groups of people. And as I've gotten older, as I've kind of understood who I am and maybe a little bit more of my dharma and my purpose. Um, It has been easier for me to understand that authentically for me, um, my life is, you know, a path where I can now speak and feel confident and feel like I have something to share. You know, I do. I do. I can totally identify with that because I too, as a young child, was super, super quiet. In fact, my parents were very concerned at various points that I would never speak up and that I would never learn to be assertive and that I would go through life just being really quiet. And um, and now it's kind of, you know, now I'm on the opposite side of that. Now I'm helping others find their voice and speak their truth. But it's those early childhood, you know, formative years that can play a huge role in molding us and shaping us. And mm-hmm. I think the more assertive we become, the more we speak our truth the more aligned we are with our authenticity and the freer we feel to be ourselves. So I applaud you for navigating your way through it the way that you did. Um, Just rewinding to college, I was curious um, about, was there a particular life experience or catalyst that prompted you to seek out yoga? Or was that just, you know, how did you, how did you choose yoga as a modality? to uh, um well and I was honestly just invited to a class you know my very first yoga class was in the wrestling room in the rec center okay so it wasn't in like a a nice calming yoga studio like someone you know one of the uh intramural teams was playing like basketball while we were like trying to find our zen and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was a very strange experience um but actually the reason I kept going back was the teacher was an English teacher and at the end of class and I had never done yoga but I had a little like a little bit of dance kind of sort of a little bit of gymnastics kind of sort of in my background so the movement felt fairly um normal for me like a little bit challenging you know things that I hadn't done but the thing that really hooked me in the beginning was um the way that the teacher her name is uh, Nancy um and the way that she linked the movement to the words and how Mm -hmm. the energy of my body shifted as I was moving and listening to her and breathing. And at the end of class, um, she always ended class by saying, live like the Lotus at home in the muddy water. And that has stuck with me my entire life. You know, it's been something that um, I continue to go back to. And I really believe that that little phrase has helped me through many, many challenges and times of stress, because even if you can't see what's coming next, 
like the lotus blooms. So it grows in, you know, the muddy water of right. like a pond or a river, right? Mm -hmm. And as it starts to grow, the bloom part that you see on the top, like reaches up for the sunlight and crests the water. And then you see the beautiful lotus blossom. And if you can find some calm, some zen, some okayness in the muddy, you know, and the things yeah. that you can't see and you can't control, right? you can continue to grow and reach for the light. And like, I was just going through, I, I feel like very normal, late teen, early 20 stresses. I didn't know who I was. I didn't really understand what I wanted to do with my life. And I still don't, but I'm okay with it now. Um, I was, you know, over involved and trying so hard to be someone I wasn't really sure was me and mm -hmm. yoga gave me that balance and the strength that I needed to be more confident. That's amazing. Um, tell me a little bit about then the progression from, you know, when you first introduced yourself to yoga to where you are now, because I know now you have a, you know, you're in a yoga instructor, you run classes and retreats, etc. So tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about that journey. And then I would love to hear what you do on a regular basis now as part of your yoga practice. Sure. Um, you know, so I, uh, I started in college and kept practicing um, while I was a student. And then after I joined a studio and fell in love with my second favorite teacher um, who really just changed my life. I think um, she gave me, I, th I think, more guidance than I could ever thank her for, but a really inspirational mentor in my life. Um, and her name is Melissa mm -hmm. and, um, that really helped me through some challenging times, you know, times where I was feeling really sad and alone and didn't really understand what it was I was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like bouts of frustration and worry for where my path was leading and the unknown. And she really helped me to, to be okay with the, the unknown. Um, and so I continued to practice with her for a long time um, until I moved and I went to grad school. And I had the opportunity to teach a little bit, both before I moved to grad school and then while I was in grad school. And that really just sparked a desire for me to be a teacher. Okay. And that actually happened a couple years into my practice. I think I've been practicing for about six years before I did my first training. Um, and I, I just, I learned so much in my training and I knew when I went into my training, I wanted to teach, okay. you know, some people do a yoga teacher training so they can further their practice. Um, and they fall into, you know, loving to teach and bringing that to people. Um, but I knew in the very beginning that I wanted to teach. And since then I've done a couple of trainings, um, and worked at many studios, moved a couple of times, taught a couple different places. Um, you know, I now teach weekly classes um, and put together really, for me, and, and I think for people who come, um, interesting and unique and creative events that are linked to not just the physical yoga practice, but the spirituality side of it, the energy side of it, the breathing, um, and then I also get to lead retreats, which are really, really fun. Um, and that's like an immersion experience. Okay. And where are those so, held? They're, I'm just curious about the retreats. Where do you? Oh, sure. Them? Yeah. So um, I have a business partner and she and I um, led our first retreat to Guatemala in 2017. And last year we did a retreat to Greece. Oh, wow. And we're actually leading one to Thailand um, this year. It's November uh, the last day of October. So we're actually, we start on Halloween, which is the mm -hmm. blue moon, the second full moon of October. Okay. And it's also, it happens to be the uh, Festival of Lanterns and the Festival of Light in Chiang Mai. So we'll be in Chiang Mai for both of those festivals, um, which should be really fun. And the, the connection there for us, we are really excited to do it in Thailand over the festivals, is those are um, really important times for letting go and planting seeds right okay. so it's it's the full moon and you you know you full moon is the perfect time to let go of stagnant energy mm -hmm. um, and start again 
And it's also um, the perfect time to recenter your intention or like reinvigorate it and plant new seeds. So um, yeah, really excited for those. Yeah, I'm sure. That sounds like an amazing experience. Yeah. Who is an ideal candidate for, for, for yoga? I mean, I know that, you know, who do you, who do you recommend who is kind of, you know, your target, your ideal client, your target audience, you know, who, who is kind of that, who is the demographic that should be, that you recommend should be seeking out yoga? Sure. Um, and honestly, I think uh, anyone will tell you this, that yoga is good for anyone, right? So it's good for anybody and anyone. And as long as you can find some stillness, and breathe, you're doing the practice of yoga. So yoga, the word means to yoke. And it's the combination of linking the body movement with the breath movement with the mind. And so using the movement of the body, you know, whatever the movement is, um, to release tension in the body so that you can breathe a little bit more deeply so that you can sit in meditation. And there are so many different styles of yoga out there like you could be doing a very challenging vinyasa movement based class you mm -hmm. could also be doing a really restorative class where you're using lots of props to be really relaxed um, chair yoga is an option if getting down up and off the floor isn't really um, part of your you know your daily life anymore um, and even just breathing practices you know mm -hmm. it could be a very simple breathing practice or something very complicated so I think that's really honestly one of the reasons I have stuck with, lo with the practice so long is I know that I can do it for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And it continues to change, right? So as my right. body changes, I get a little bit older, or I have an injury or whatever, I can still stay with my practice. Right, right. It is something that you can just, that can stay with you throughout your entire life. What are the, the benefits associated with yoga? I know you talked about like releasing tension, but what are some of the mm -hmm. other you know, physical, mental, spiritual benefits associated with yoga? Yeah. Um, so physical benefits, you know, are mobility. So you regain mobility in places where maybe you've lost it. So let's say, for example, you work at like a desk job. So I work 40 hours a week at a desk job, and then I um, try and counter that with movements. Okay. So it could be like external hip rotation to counter the internal hip rotation of me sitting at a desk, or even when I stand at my desk, right? Still the same positioning of my body. Um, if you get headaches, like it could help with releasing tension in your neck or in your shoulders so that you know, your head is relaxed and you're not mm -hmm. getting those, um, those tension headaches. Um, as well as gaining strength, you know, gaining flexibility, um, gaining balance, awareness of your body in space. I think that's even one of those things that for beginners, um, if they haven't had a movement practice, they're not really actually sure, you know, where their arms are in space when they're moving them or their legs or their body. And so that's really helpful. The more that you understand about the movement of your body, the more in tune you are when it's out of alignment. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as, you know, spiritual and mental benefits, like it's so good for your mind to calm down and to get that extra oxygen into the body and to you know, circulate it through all the organs. Um, good for, I just was teaching a restorative class and at the end of class, we all put our legs up the wall to try and release um, both tension and then also like energy from the lower half of the body out. Okay. So if you kind of think about your orientation to gravity at most times, you know, it's good to flip it. Mm -hmm. change it a little bit um lots and lots of benefits you know I've right had many injuries and many other things that have happened and always finding my way back to yoga yeah yeah I find it to be just immensely restorative and calming and mm -hmm. it's like my zen place that studio you know just the the dark room I feel like I just I check I leave everything at the door and I just it's just me and my mat and it is just so it's just such an introspective opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's an introspective journey and opportunity for self-reflection in addition to the physical benefits, the stretching. I mean, there's just so many, there's just so many benefits, but I have to say in the spirit of just authenticity, it took me a little while to fall into my groove of really um, getting comfortable with yoga and mm -hmm. 
learning to enjoy it. And I, now I've come to a point where I actually crave it. I so look forward to it because, you know, I used to be, you know, cardio girl, lift, high intensity exercises, plyo, you know, um, run, you know, races, half marathons, marathons, et cetera. And it, it's very hard for me to kind of power down. So I know the first few times I went to yoga class, one of my friends prompted me to go and I just, I was getting frustrated with myself because I, it just wasn't that, that high intensity exercise that I was used to, but I had to readjust my expectations and tell myself, well, this is actually kind of the yin and the yang. I mean, this is the balance that you need. And this is why you need to do this because it's not that high intensity um, exercise that you're used to. And I know a big piece of it for me was, um, and I had, this is where, you know, yoga is one of the main modalities that helped me learn to just leave judgment out of it, you know, judging myself, you know, that self-judgment, judging others, et cetera, and just put the blinders on. And it's just me and my mat and my practice, because I was constantly sizing myself up in the beginning to, well, they're doing that pose right. And I'm not. And I'm wondering if you can talk about that a little bit, the whole judgment aspect and how yoga can help us release judgment in the yoga studio and beyond because I know that was one of my challenges. And first, I'm curious if you've seen that, if you've heard people talk about that, or if you've had that same experience with regard to yoga and its um, effect on judgment and also how you help people navigate that. Yeah. Um, so I'll talk about myself first because um, that's like my point of reference. Uh, so I spent years and years and years um, being very unhappy with myself. And not liking, you know, as a teenager, I didn't like my skin and I didn't like mm -hmm. my hair and I had acne and mm -hmm. I, you know, just, I always felt too skinny and like, I couldn't ever build strength and, um, you know, got teased a lot as a kid. And so mm -hmm. that just like that repetitive negativity stuck with me for a long time. Um, and so I... It didn't really notice it at first, but it definitely started happening as I continued to practice and to practice from a place that wasn't just, I want to conquer this pose. I want to be super strong. You know, it wasn't from a place that was just purely physical. It was from a place of, I want to find balance mm -hmm. and I want to find, um, you know, an understanding and patience for myself and gratitude you know, right. for, for this physical form. Right. Um, and, and it took me a while, but I remember there was one, there was one particular moment um, where one of my teachers was taking us through this uh, final relaxation exercise where we were working with the different chakra energy points in the body. Mm -hmm. And she was going through the different colors of every energy point. And we got to the heart space, which is Anahata, um, and resonates to the color green. And she was talking about, you know, this energy space, and I could just feel in my chest, like that color and that vibrancy, like filling my whole chest and my whole heart space, front to back, side to side. And it was the first moment that I really connected um, the practice with something that was beyond my comprehension, you know, that there was something else at play. And I really believe that those are the moments, that one and then others that happened after that, that really helped me to release expectation and to go with the flow and to live in the moment. And I really right. believe that those are the moments, those are the, the tools that you use to release judgment, right, for yourself right, and then for others. So moment to moment, you know, you're different. But moment to moment, you're also the same. And mm -hmm. if you can um, learn to find the balance, right, in the flow, right. Right. Um, it's, a, it's so much easier to let go of all that other stuff. You don't need it. Right. It's so true. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I think also that's one of my favorite things, being a teacher, is watching that happen for my students and watching it unfold. Mm -hmm. So right. fun. It's got to be so amazing to witness that transformation right in front of your mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah. And the more you do it, right, the more you practice on the mat, the more you take it out into your life, which I'm right. sure, yeah, is exactly what you were saying. You know, you, you learn to do it in a space that's 
uh, that's set for it and the lights are dim and you've got the mat and there's maybe some essential oils or whatever. Um, right. Okay. Yes, I can do this. And then you step outside and someone honks their horn and you're like, ah! mm-hmm. that was my right. bed. So you learn to bring it back in. It's so true. I mean, I think that that's, that's one of the main, I mean, yoga has benefited me in many, in many ways, but it's just so symbolic. What happens in the yoga room is just so symbolic and can carry over into your life and can be applied. And, you know, I, I use this phrase all the time around my house, but just, you know, with my kids, just stay in your own lane. You know, don't worry about what other people are doing. It's about you. It's about you and your journey and your path. And the, the sooner you can learn to disengage or, you know, take that or depart from comparing yourself to other people. Cause that's not what this journey is about, right? I mean, that's not what this physical journey is about the spiritual journey at all. It's about, it's very much an individual journey. And we learn that we can learn that in the yoga room because it's just about us and our practice and the mat. And we can take that out into the world and it's easier. At least it was easier for me. It's been my experience that it was easier for me to to disengage from things that I didn't need to be worried about, right? I mean, how does this affect me? It doesn't. So don't worry about it. And I was easier to, it was easier to sort of silence that external chatter, that external noise. And I wasn't triggered as much anymore because I now had the understanding that everybody is on their own individual journey and don't, you don't need to worry about what they're doing and you don't need to compare or critique or anything. Just they're doing their best on their journey and my job is to just stay focused and do my best on my journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that yoga just offers so many rich opportunities for life lessons that we can take from the yoga studio out into the world. I agree. I um, agree 100%. Yeah. So what would you say, do you have any general words of wisdom for people who have been dabbling with the idea of getting, you know, of taking up yoga, but maybe are unsure or have some hesitation or some doubt or some fear or, you know, had some hesitancy, whatever it is, what words of wisdom do you have to say to sort of coax people into the yoga studio and at least give it a try for themselves? You know, I always encourage people to find, um, to find a physical place if possible that they can go and try the practice. Okay. Um, there are a lot of really amazing online tools um, but I really believe, especially in the beginning, as you're learning, if it's available to you, it's really great to go and be in a space that is designed to help you with the practice, right? So if there's a studio nearby, first of all, like, look and see what's around. And then I would look for like a beginner class. So something that is tailored for people who are interested in the practice, but maybe don't have any experience. Okay. Um, and if, you know, if you're worried about, let's say, like getting up and down off the floor, look for a chair yoga class. If there isn't one available, the other thing, too, is to reach out to studios and see if anyone offers like private lessons so you can learn a little bit before you go into a group class setting. Because that is the thing that has come up so many times for me with students is, you know, I tried it once, but I didn't know what I was doing. And so I never went back. Mm hmm. And so I'll even encourage people to do, you know, a couple lessons with me one-on-one -on -one first okay. so I can introduce the poses and mm -hmm. or do like a beginner workshop um, so they have a feel for maybe some of the movements that might happen because if you've never done them, it does initially seem weird and it makes you feel very self-confident um, or self-conscious. Uh, conscious thank you yeah I knew um yeah yeah um so very self-conscious so so what we're trying to do is to build confidence by doing either like a beginner class or a couple one-on-one -on -one sessions or just something that allows you to um to get a feel for the movement and that's why I really advocate for going to an in-person teacher if possible at mm -hmm. least in the beginning because they'll, they'll be able to see your body 360 all the way around you can talk to them about what's going on. Maybe, you know, you're dealing with a knee replacement or maybe you're dealing with, um, you know, some breathing uh, uh, restrictions or something, you know, maybe you have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And so going to an instructor will be helpful for you to kind of figure out what it is that you need to modify for in the beginning so that you have a good experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's some great words great words of wisdom. Thank you. 
Um, and just talking beyond yoga, I mean, I know yoga is yoga is one of the many modalities that we can employ in a holistic lifestyle, a lifestyle that um, commits to nurturing our mind, body, and spirit. So I'm just curious, what other um, lifestyle habits or regimens do you have in place that complement yoga and this whole life, holistic lifestyle? Yeah. Um, so my husband and I made a move out to the Black Hills of South Dakota about a year and a half ago, and that was for many reasons, but really intentionally to put ourselves um, more in touch with nature. So to be a little bit more surrounded by, yeah, by forests and trees and to easily be able to get on hiking trails. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a dog and, you know, we love to take her out for adventures. I think that's like, I always look forward to the, the weekend when I get to go explore. Um, and so for me, that's really important. But even when I can't go, like, let's say hop on a trail or something, even if it's just during my work day, I try to be very intentional about setting aside a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So it could be like over my lunch, um, I might set aside, you know, 15 or 20 minutes where I just close my door and I breathe if possible. Yeah. It doesn't happen every day. Or maybe if it's nice outside, I take myself for a walk and try and reset and recenter, especially in the middle of the day, so I can continue to be productive for the end right. of the day. Um, but, you know, even just like easy things, like um, when, we, when we bought the house we live in now, I filled it with plants. And so that brings me a lot of joy, you know, to have the green yeah. inside the house, especially in the winter when you live in the Midwest, um, in the mountains. Um, those are really important things. Right, right. And both of those, obviously, super high vibration, right? Anything in nature is about as high vibration as you can get. Plants, bringing that into your house. So it's all about um, surrounding ourselves with high vibrational things and people and experiences so that we can align ourselves with our higher selves and really commit to that spiritual, holistic lifestyle. Um, so that's amazing. So is there anything else before we wrap up? I know I could chat with you all day about this. I find this to be so fascinating, but is there anything else that you would like to share about yoga just or about holistic lifestyle in general with our, um, our listeners and viewers? Honestly, um, I would say find something that resonates with you. So um, what I always say to students too is, uh, if for whatever reason, you know, and there's never any hard feelings about it. If for whatever reason, let's say you don't resonate with me as a teacher, mm -hmm. please don't stop. Please find another teacher, try another class. See if that's like more your vibration because we all like vibrate at different frequencies. Right. Right. And even though like, and I believe that we're all like connected through higher energy sometimes it's easier for people to like hop on and try something new when they're vibrating at a similar frequency as the person who's maybe leading them through that. And so I, and I've had plenty of students who are like, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, and like they keep coming back to me. I've also had students who have left something and maybe gone off and found another teacher. And so I always have to be really good with, you know, like we all find the path that we need to be on. Um, but that's really, I think one of the biggest things I would say is don't stop just because maybe your first experience wasn't the right experience. Mm -hmm. Find a different one and keep growing from it. Because if you stop every time something gets challenging, then you will never continue to have experience. And it's not just with yoga, right? It's with life. I was, <laughs> I was just going to say that. I mean, that's another example of how we can take, you know, yoga out into the world, right? Because that's, you know, we, we can't stop it at the, the first no that we get. I mean, first no, yeah. you know, the no right now means a yes down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about finding a match, finding that vibrational match um, so that it can, it can serve us. It puts us in a place to connect with our highest self. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you for sharing that. And if people would like to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Um, you know, the easiest way is probably on um, my Facebook page or my Instagram, um, which are both under Clarissa May, M-A-E. Um, my Facebook page has all my events. So any retreat or specialty workshop or festival I might be teaching at would be on my Facebook page. 
Um, Instagram is more about like daily or weekly inspiration. And I might do like some little mini challenges or something. Um, and then my website will have some, some information as well, which is clarissamay.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and for being on my show today. I'm so grateful that you've carved time out of your day to share all of your wisdom with our listeners and viewers. So thank thank you you so so much. much. It's been been really fun. It's been such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. And to all of our listeners and viewers, I would like to thank all of you. Time is a choice and I am so grateful that you have chosen to be with us today. Also just wanted to remember uh, to remind you that you are invited to our Facebook group. I would love to have you. Again, it's a group of people committed to growth and transformation, and we can be found at liveauthentically.today slash FB. Thanks again, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.